Glenn Dormand or AKA Chit Chat, if in the early, you know, 2000s you were following Machine Gun Flatio. In the studio right now, welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me here on this brisk morning. I know. Now, we're going to talk about the Our Town series. Before we do that, speaking of history, you were wild back in the day. How are you not dead? (laughs) When you're in Machine Gun Fellatio, you you used to be nude. You would climb scaffolding. I mean, it was the best. The amount of times I saw you at the bar on the hill. We blew up the PA there, actually. Yeah, yes. well, you know, I'm a man, I'm a father with two daughters now. So the ultimate karmic uh, thing has happened to me where I have two young daughters that I have to be good for. Yeah. And I just You've hope been... they grow up and meet no one like me. <laughs> matured. I never thought the day would come. Oh, it's just fantastic though. And you've evolved in time and you're now doing this Our Town series. which Stories is, of Our Town. Can I say Stories of Our Town? Stories just get of the name. Our that's Town. That's right. Yep, which yep. you're really excited about. You're collaborating on this one and, and this has been something that's obviously a passion project for you. Oh, it's, it's, it's amazing. We, we started out with the Star Hotel Riot a couple of years ago when it was the anniversary and it's just grown and we've had more people come on board and now working really closely with the archive here at the university and also the archives of the library. All these photos were unearthing and these stories and, and the plan with the whole thing is to have the story of Newcastle told not by historians but actually by people who lived it. You know, so we're doing this one on architecture at the moment. We've got Brian Suders who designed Roundhouse and, you know, which is now Kingsley. And um, also uh, he did The Fountain. He worked on The Fountain. So having these people talk firsthand and, and some amazing stories coming out, it's, it's been the best fun. Let's talk about The Roundhouse because I believe that came out, uh, that documentary came out yesterday when it opened, yeah. our yeah. first five-star hotel. Very excited for Newcastle. Um, how does Brian feel about that? Is he excited uh, that it's being transformed <laughs> or is he going, I'm not liking this? I uh, I don't think I should answer for I, I don't oh. think he's happy, but I, 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 <laughs> okay. I actually talked to him the other day and um, he, I just hope he goes up because there's, and sees it because that the view from upstairs, whatever the, the best restaurant and bar is in Newcastle two days ago isn't today because once you go there and you experience that feeling, it will blow you away because it's 360 degrees of views of Newcastle, which most people haven't seen. So, yeah. But in saying that, um, Brian's original design is what makes it so amazing. It, it, it's, it's a standalone building in the world, I think. And, in fact, it was um, just listed. This hotel opening was listed as the most anticipated hotel opening in the world. It had a list of 17 hotels. It came out in this architectural magazine because of how interesting the building that Brian did was. So I don't think he's particularly happy about some, some of the things they've done. But the greatest compliment about this building and what's happening is that great architecture outlives single purpose. Yes. So he is. how do you get an admin bin, like a, such a boring idea of a, a council admin building, to become a five-star hotel? It's pretty and, amazing. And they've kept the same shape. And, it, and really, I, I hate saying it, but it works much better as a hotel. <laughs> Look, it's kind of indicative of where Newcastle's going. I've got two kids as well, so I never get out, but... I went down into Newcastle the other night and I was just amazed. The amount of speakeasies, uh, the fine dining. I think I saw two Pinot and Picasso art classes going on. It was just alive and I thought, well, from a place that looked a little bit derelict, you know, only a few years years ago, ago. it is just phenomenal. And you made a great point that to know where we're going, you need to know where we've been, which I guess is one of the reasons you're so passionate about uh, the stories of our town. Well, I am because it's it's actually like there's so much of that area is being... Uh, repurposed. So, like Nesca House became University House, the, the town hall is being re, you know, rebadged as a, like a function centre. So, there's a whole lot going on there. I went to a little bar, like you mentioned, there's a bar called Rogue Scholar, this guy. Oh, we went there the other day. Yeah, that's a great, b- great bar. But Adam, I, I've met Adam at dinner a while back, and he said, Why don't you come in and show one of your films? We had a little movie night. Um, and we showed our film on Joseph Lysett, the Aboriginal, um, the guy who captured all the Aboriginal art 200 years ago, the convict artist. And we also showed our little Vera Deacon film there. And these people are drinking their craft beers, completely different audience to where we'd shown it at the art gallery and the museum, and they just lapped it up. And so we're, we're talking about having like a regular movie night in town just on a Sunday afternoon, come and watch some movies and drink and, some nice beers. And it's right near the karaoke bar. 
just a heads up because yeah. I'll be there. Very exciting. <laughs> All right, Glenn. I can't call, call you Glenn. Chit chat. Yeah. Where can people go to, to find these series? Okay, storiesofourtown.com. But actually, just go to the um, – we've got a YouTube channel, Stories of Our Town. And a Facebook page. Like us on Facebook. Like us on Facebook. Stories of Our Town. That simple. Think of, hey, this is our town, but it's stories of our town. Such an amazing series. And I believe you've got six or seven to go that you're putting out in the next couple of months. Yeah, well, there's more than that because we're doing one on the Castanet Club. So anyone who remembers the Castanet (laughs) Club, we've got one due at the end of the month, which is going to be part of the museum's exhibition. And, yeah, I mean, we're very lucky. The council came and saved us last week. We we were running out of money and they came and helped us at last minute. Well, I think it's a really important project and we appreciate your time popping in today. Lovely. Thanks, Sarah. Good to see you. Bye. 2NURFM, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle.